Hey everybody, this is Kelly of Rojo Chief Clothing and I'm going to start off this video about tobacco dealing with the end of my last video and the reason why that is is because I was looking at my DNA results and I was showing you what they had there and I also was showing you what one of my uh, records, ge genealogy records was saying and it was a huge contrast to what they were trying to say. They were saying with my DNA that I'm mostly African and we know that can't be true because uh, most of the people that was enslaved were Africans there was American Indians for one and then two on my genealogy record my great great grandfather Louis McAlpin as you saw that he was in they said that he was born in Creek Indian Territory and he was there when this when the Indian Territory became the state of Alabama so anyways Okay, in this particular part of the video, um, I show how, and I suppose how Ancestry DNA, they're racist and how they're lying about the tobacco industry. And they're trying to say that it was free blacks or free African Americans in particular. They're trying to make you believe that African American people or people that was brought from Africa were working the tobacco fields. And they're not telling you the real deal truth that it was actually American Indians who had Negro features or in other words, uh, people that they call black today, the paleo Indians who they had renamed Negro black colored and now today African American, uh, the Negro Indian was the ones were the Indians that was growing tobacco and created the tobacco industry way before the Europeans came here. So what they did was, as Karamea would say, they did a hijack and tried to associate the African with the American Indian, the Negro Indian, Paleo Indian industry. Okay. And then I'm going to show you how in Wikipedia, another racist is trying to cover up the fact that the Negro Indians were the ones who they saw on the Eastern Seaboard. When I talk about the Eastern Seaboard, I'm talking about all the way from the state of Maine all the way down to the state of Florida, the eastern seaboard. And when the Europeans came, they saw the Negro Indians. They didn't see the Mongoloid Indians. And they saw those Negro Indians growing tobacco. So anyways, so let's get into this, these lies. Because, you know, because in the Wikipedia, they're going to mention how the authentic version of the Indians they insinuate that the authentic version of the Indians is the Mongoloid version and that the black boy version was of a uh, so-called African slave. That's what they're trying to make you believe with fanciful, as they like to call it, fanciful uh, head, you know, uh, attire or clothing and a headdress where that is further from the truth because we know that it was the Negro Indian who was the original and true an authentic image of the tobacco Indian because the ones that they call Mongoloid Indians, they wasn't over there growing tobacco. A lot of them, those type of Indians was, I believe, more West. They was your Plains Indians. A lot of them was out West. They wasn't out East like that. So anyway, let's get into it. Over 200 year period, we are enslaved and brought to Virginia to work on the tobacco farms. Now, we know that the tobacco farms were an American Indian crop. So, now they're trying to tie the African people to tobacco. But we know that's not the case. We know that was the, uh, the Indians that was in Virginia, and one of them were uh, the Powhatan Confederacy. Okay? Anyway, it says life both free and enslaved black Virginians grew more difficult as race based laws imposed new restrictions black Virginians as we know black Virginians are really um, American Indians but also black was also put on American Indians and Africans it says responded to rebellions and cultural innovations it's anyways it says although the 17th century free black Virginians it says although 17th century free black Virginians could vote and own property now, what in the world? That doesn't make any sense. How in the world can a 
person be of African ancestry? Where they do that at? You know, when's the last time that they said in school that African people was able to own property? Not any time, because they said that those people were slaves. But now they're up here telling you that 17th century you had so-called black Virginians who were own who owned property and who and it also said that uh, that they could vote. And it says once the tobacco industry and later cotton boom, slavery began became enshrined in American society. So, to me, in other words, what they let you know right there. And it says the period of 1700, 1725. So they try to cover up the fact of what the Autochthonous once said is that there were American Indians that were growing tobacco and they were shipping that tobacco from Virginia to England, okay? And it also... Everybody, we're going to talk about the tobacco industry and how this was a American Indian industry. So, okay, Wikipedia, it says a cigar store Indian or wooden Indian is a advertisement figure in the likeness of a Native American. It's not supposed to be Native American, we know. That's supposed to be American Indian. It says used to represent tobacco -ness. The figures are often three-dimensional wooden sculptures several feet tall up to life size. They are still occasionally used for their original advertising purposes but are often seen as decorations or advertising collectibles with some pieces selling for for hundreds of thousands of dollars now why would they be selling these decorations or collectibles for hundreds of thousands of dollars in my opinion they're doing that because they know the original um figures statues that they use were of the original indians the paleo indians the Negro Indians, which is us, you know, and now today what they're doing is they're showing you a different type. They're showing you the Indian that they call the Mongoloid Indian. And this is not the original Indian. This is not how they originally depicted the Indians who was in uh, the state of Virginia who was growing tobacco. That's not how the Indians look. That was there in the 15th century. And they didn't look like this either, even though this one is of a darker complexion, of a deep copper color tone, copper tone, but their hair is straight. But you, we already know that um, the reason why the Indians were shown with having straight hair a lot of the times is because they straightened out their hair. But anyways, that's a whole other video that I'm going to get into later on. But anyway, getting back to this. And it says people within the Native American community often show such likenesses as a caric caricature as depictions that perpetrate stereotypes drawing an analogy to the African American lawn jockey. Because of general illiteracy so, of the populace, meaning a lot of the people couldn't read, so they had to use pictures for them to understand what the story was about, the population. So, so anyways, it says... Early store owners used descriptive emblems or figures to advertise their shops. It says barber poles advertise barber shops, show globes advertise apothecaries, and three globe balls represents pawn shops. It says American Indians and tobacco had always been associated because American Indians introduced tobacco to Europeans. Okay, so we can go over that again. It says American Indians and tobacco had always been associated because American Indians introduced tobacco to Europeans. It says, and the depiction of Native people on a smoke shop sign was almost inevitable. As early as the 17th century, European tobacconists used figures of American Indians to advertise their shops. So, 17th century, you're talking about the 1600s. And says because European carvers had never seen a Native American, which is a lie, because Europeans definitely saw American Indians because they referred in their books, in their writings, um, the so-called European explorers, the colonists who invaded the American Indian territories, they definitely saw and knew who we were and how we looked. So this is a straight lie. This is a straight lie right here. 
talking about they never seen a Native American. They absolutely did see the Native Americans and they, AKA American Indians, because they said, and they wrote it themselves, that they were Negroes. Anyways, it says, these early cigar store Indians look more like black slaves. Now that is a slap in the face. That's how you know this person who wrote this was racist. And they don't know what he's talking about. It says, with feather headdresses and other fanciful exotic features. No, it wasn't fanciful and it wasn't exotic because that's exactly how Powhatan looks. Chief Powhatan, which is in the uh, Virginia Historical Museum, I believe. That's exactly how he looks. So it was nothing exotic or fanciful about that. It's just this person is just racist and they just want you to believe that these were just depictions of a slave with, with a feather headdress and that they had on imaginary uh, clothing on the Indian because they didn't know how Indian looked. It's like, please. Anyway, it says these carvings were called black boys or Virginians in the trade. It says eventually the cigar uh, store figure began to take on a more authentic yet high stylized native vestige, which is lies. They because they want you to believe that the that what was authentic. They want to make you believe that what's authentic is the Mongoloid Indian. But that's not authentic. The real authentic Indian was the Negro Indian, because the Negro Indians were up and down the eastern seaboard, meaning all the way from Massachusetts, all the way down to Virginia, it was the Negro Indian who they saw. And that's the real deal reason why they um, had the Indians or the tobacco Indian or scar Indian looking like that. Okay, so now I'm going to cite you a reference that will be considered as a legitimate reference because it's coming from an Ivy League uh, university, which is Stanford. Now it says here, the history of tobacco and its growth. The history of tobacco and its growth throughout the world by Jason Young. Tobacco, one of the most important cash crops in American farming, is native to the North and South American continents. It first became known to the rest of the world when European explorers in the 15th, meaning the 1400s, and 16th centuries which is the 1500s, saw it being used as, as a medicine and as a hallucinogen by Native Americans, but it's really not Native Americans, American Indian. The explorers returned to Europe with the newfound plant, and it quickly was adopted by rich and poor alike as a drug of choice. Banned at first by kings and popes, its economic effects and broad popularity forced acceptance among all cultures. It quickly spread throughout the civilized world and became a foundation for the growth of the American economy. This paper will trace the history of tobacco from its use by Native Americans through the end of the 19th century when mechanization and mass marketing started to make tobacco production the major industry it has become. Tobacco is a name used for plants of the genius Nictotinia of the Solensei nightshade family. Name is also used for the product manufactured from tobacco leaves and used in cigars, cigarettes, snuff, and pipe and chewing tobacco. Different species of the tobacco plant with different characteristics associated with smoking Fast burning, slow burning, mild, strong, have become popular in different parts of the world. The primary active ingredient of tobacco is the alkaloid nicotine, which is responsible for the narcotic and soothing qualities, the Columbia Encyclopedia. There is little reliable information concerning the early uses of tobacco by Native Americans, which is obviously American Indians, prior to the arrival of the Europeans in 1492, some Mayan and Incan drawings and carvings appear to show tobacco and use in ceremonies, but little is known of the actual meaning of those representations. So, in other words, we use tobacco because for different spiritual reasons, 
And what I read in a book one time, they said that to, the use of tobacco was when somebody was married or when a baby was born or when a person had died. And also, you can also use tobacco on your ancestor altar in order to contact your ancestors. Okay. So anyways, it says much was written concerning its use at the time of the European explorations. However, there is no reason to believe that the uses witnessed in the 15th and 16th centuries were recent developments. So they're saying that this is something that's really old, of course, right? And it says in 1492, when the floodgates of European explorers opened on North and South America, the many different native cultures there already had long traditions of chewing, smoking, and snuffing tobacco. I remember my mother told me that her grandmother used to snuff tobacco. And she was from down south. She was originally, I think, from North Carolina, but she had moved to uh, Virginia. Anyways, he said, sometimes in uh, conjunction with other psychotropic plants, psychotropic, meaning like uh, plants that will, you know, elevate your psychic abilities, you know, like the uh, Yash plant that the uh, Black Panther, the jaguar, eats in South America. It has a, it's a hallucinogen. Anyways, it says, use uh, regularly in ritual and social context tobacco, and its counterparts were appreciated Precisely for their physiological and mind-altering effects, which, among other things, aided the American Indians or Amer Indians in their pursuit of the supernatural by Elizabeth Wyckoff. It appears that tobacco's mind-altering effects made it universally an interest to Native Americans in their religious observances and in preparing for war. So you see how they know the reasons why our ancestors used tobacco? Okay, they know, and this is the main reason why we use it and why we're, uh, why we use tobacco, why we smoke it, is because it's an ancestral thing, you know, and it's it's in our DNA to do this. It's in our DNA to, you know, to deal with tobacco. But if I was to deal with tobacco, it would have to be organic, you know, totally organic. Anyway, it says among the Mayans, it was regularly offered to the gods both as incense burned on the altar and as smoke from the mouths of the worshippers. One of the best preserved reliefs from their ancient temple at the Palenque shows a priest smoking a cigar. Among the Aztecs it was a necessary accompaniment to the ceremonies at which thousands of captives were slain to sacrifice to the god Zecatilipico. The medicine men of the more primitive Tano Penapolis tribe in Brazil would fill and light their pipes and puff the smoke into the faces of the assembled Lanty. The purpose of this being the, to transmit the heroic virtue. The warriors thus prepared attacked their enemies with a demonic fury and almost inevitable were victorious. As, the, as is clear from the quoted passage, the use of tobacco in religious and public ceremonies was nearly universal throughout the Americas among the various tribes of American Indians. Uh, its use as medicine was also universal. The European explorers reported back that tobacco in its various forms was used to cure almost every ailment known to man. Mm. Medically, North and Tua I'm, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, had many uses among the desert tribes. The crushed leaves were made into politices to soothe rheumatic and other swellings to uh, place on eczema and similar skin infection. The same material was placed along the gums as a cure for a toothache. The chewed leaves could be applied to cuts or bound on rattlesnake bites after the poison had been sucked out. Smoking was said by the desert Indians to be a cure for colds, especially if the tobacco was mixed with leaves of small desert sage, salvia dory, or the root of an Indian, boss, or cough root. 
and says Lippy Liptotenia Montefita, the addition of which was thought to be particularly good for asthma and tuberculosis. They introduce tree tobacco, nicotina, gluca, which is common in the waste places below 3,000 feet. It's also said to have been used for smoking by both the Indians and whites. Medically, the leaves were supposed to be good, steamed, and used as a poultice to relieve a swollen throat and steamed into, and steamed into the body for those suffering from rheumatism. Though tobacco seemed a true wonder drug capable of inducing a relaxed and calm state before battle and putting off hunger and treating all manner of diseases, it is interesting that, as will be discussed below, supposedly advanced Europeans happily accepted the Native American calms of health benefit and even extended those, those claims further. As they uh, came to believe that tobacco could be a cure even for the bubonic plague. The first reaction to tobacco use in Europe were primarily focused on its narcotic effects. As early as 1525, the smoking of tobacco was described as something that could clarify the mind and give happy thoughts. In other words, tobacco was from the start perceived as having calming effect on the senses, therefore allowing ample room for uh, reverie, if not uh, always the downright abandoned and physical collapse suggestive of the outer body experience seen in American Indian ritual. In England, it was introduced to the country by Sir Walter Raleigh, a larger-than-life explorer and friend of the Queen. He was a shameless promoter of tobacco as a necessary recreation for all gentlemen. He smoked openly and constantly. Soon smoking was seen as the height of fashion, well before it was generally adopted by the general population. Men's clubs and hunting parties were soon seen to be enveloped in thick clouds of smoke from the pipes of the gentlemen smoking sometimes referred to as drinking smoke, was also closely associated with drinking alcohol as association that made it more attractive to some and an article of shame to others. Smoking was doubtless a, uh, a familiar practice in the ports of England before the frequently quoted incident of Drake's return from Virginia with a number of colonists in 1586, these men brought with them pipes, tobacco, seeds, plants, and their example of what was at first called drinking tobacco smoke, inhaling and apparently swallowing it, is known to have caused considerable excitement and interest. From that time, at any rate, smoking developed from the private pleasure of a few tobacconists, at, as the first smokers were called, into a social practice. Yet, in spite of the satire, there was bound to make sport of a habit which was taking society by storm. By 1600, smoking ranked in the life of a fashionable man with dancing, riding, hunting, and card playing. Alfred H. Dunhill. So, anyways, the, the point is, is that they're showing you how tobacco was used by the Indians in South America, Central America, and other various parts and the reason why our ancestors used tobacco is so you know for spiritual ceremonies and they used it to go to war against other people so they use it for and they used it for medicine so they used it for many different reasons and that's why tobacco is such a, a sacred plant and that's why also you should put this in your magical pantry in order to do any sort of spell work so anyway so you should do use it, you know, for all these different reasons. I would suggest to get a herbal um, book uh, about its medicinal qualities, and also to get a book about uh, magic, especially about uh, American Indian magic or Native American magic, so you can see all of the different spiritual reasons and ways that you could use this plant. So, anyways, I'm gonna leave this here. Tell me what do you think below. Like, share, and subscribe. I'm out.